we're, we're doing the, the combo again. We had right Chiefs coach Andy Reid, then Chiefs GM Brett Veach. Now we've had Jaguars coach Doug Peterson, and we've got Jaguars general manager Trent Bauke. Welcome back to the program. How are you? Good, good. Tough group to follow, though. Uh, those three. So here we go. You're all right. You're a little hoarse there. You all right? This has been my voice since I was old enough to hear it. So <laughs> it hasn't changed. is isn't going to change. Believe, say, I, believe it or not, I never smoked a cigarette in my life. So, Damn. That's, a, that's hey, kind of amazing. You still run marathons? No. I gave that up. Okay. Gave that up. Did you give it up or did your body say you're giving it up? Because my body eventually said to me you're giving it up. I think my body said it's enough. You know, yeah. but still runs, just don't participate in the, the long runs anymore. Yeah. Well, the human body was not meant to run 26 miles. Uh, never. I'm not, I don't even run a mile. I haven't run a mile <laughs> since eighth grade gym class. That ain't happening. Um, all right, so I, I, I mean, you're, we talked to Doug a little bit, like he, uh, Mike said here a few minutes ago. You know, when you did a great job accumulating talent off season, the draft was great, you know, when did you kind of look at your football team and go, oh, wow, like, you know, we got something here at least to, to play with in the future and, and maybe we can be competitive this year? Well, when we went into free agency a year ago and into the draft. When we got done with those two phases, Doug and I sat back and looked. We felt we had a pretty good football team. Yeah. You know, but it was getting them to believe they were a good football team and getting them to believe, believe and trust in, in Doug and the staff and what the systems that we were implementing. You know, so that that was a process. It really was a night and day difference from 2021 to 2022, yeah. and you were the common thread between the two. Right. H how much did you notice of the, just the change in the players, in everything, from one year to the next? Well, again, you know, that was a two-year build, right? That was a 2021 free agent class in 2000. Uh, it was 2021, so we had two free agent classes that went into that and two draft classes that went into that. And the plan was, all along was we felt we could get competitive year one, which was which Coach Meyer's first year, and we really felt we could win six to eight games in that first year. You know, and obviously that didn't happen, but the goal all along was to try to get very competitive six to eight games year one and then push for a playoff spot in year two and felt really good about the two classes that we had drafted and the two classes, free agent classes, but really had a plan, and that plan started with, with Coach Peterson. You're, you're, I'm, I'm always intrigued, because Mike's heard me say before, like, you, you know, your team with the 49ers, you had Adonis's everywhere. I went to the Hall of Fame game this year. It's the second time in this show I'm bringing it up. You got, like, you know, Adonis's. You're a size guy, right? I mean, how do you, how do you, you know, what is your, your blind canvas? How do you look for players and kind of build teams? Well, you know, starting out when I started out in this profession, it was with Coach Parcells. Yeah. You know, and he always said he wanted to get to get to the stadium in buses, not not Volkswagen. Right, <laughs> right. That was his. Thing, that was one know. of his sayings, right? So, you know, you want to you want to look like an NFL football team. Size matters, right. at least for us and how we envision things. Yep. And getting off the bus is important. And we're looking for length. Like I think length over time has proven to be very successful right. in this league. Looking at the ability to hold up late season yeah. and go through a 17-game stretch this right. season right. and then into the playoffs. You know, and, and it's a lot easier for big bodies to withstand that. Yeah. And then looking at the teams that you got to beat in the – in the NFL, whether it's the NFC or the AFC, late in this, you're going to have to play in cold weather. You're going to have to run the ball when people know you're going to run the football. And that's where size matters again. Yeah, so right. just looking at the durability of the players, the functionality of them, and, and when you want to be playing football and how you want to play it. Right. All that factors into how we build it. Did he, did, you know, I mean, I know you're a Parcells guy. I, I lived and grew up with a Parcells guy who gave me a quote every other day of my life, right? <laughs> and one other quote along those lines, I want to know if he ever said it to you, is, you know, you know, big guys don't get smaller, but fast guys will get slower as the year goes on. Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And the one he always used to say is, you know, that's why they have weight classes in boxing and wrestling. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Big guys beat little guys. Yeah, yeah. If it was just one weight, the little guy would never win. Right, so it right. rarely win. That's you know, a good one. You were talking about your free agent classes, and it was nearly a year ago when the process got started and Christian Kirk signed that contract, four years, $72 million, and everybody was like, that's crazy, that's crazy, that's crazy. And then the 
receiver market yeah. went haywire. And there was a point like in April where we're like, you know, that Christian Kirk deal actually Doesn't looks look like that a bad pretty or, good deal right yeah. now when you consider where the market's gone. Did you have a sense what was going to happen with some of these other guys when you signed Kirk? Well, I think we, we, you know, people want to say it was because of that contract the, the market went ballistic, but I don't believe that. No. I think the market was trending that way, you know, and it's, you know, the whole purpose of our free agency, as we talked about it with Coach Peterson, was making sure we had the right pieces around to help Trevor develop, right? A, a year earlier, we didn't, we just didn't have enough weapons. We didn't have enough speed on the field. We couldn't get guys open. Uh, at the at the rate we needed to so going into that off season between the, and then taking a look at the draft knowing that our where we were drafting and what would be available that our best option was free agency right to put the, those pieces around Trevor bringing in young receivers is difficult as we know it takes them a while to develop there's right. only a certain amount of guys that come in and play well at that position early on so getting guys that know how to play, and the one thing we loved about Christian, he's a very smart football player. Not only does he have a good set of skills, he's extremely intelligent. He plays the game fast mentally, uh, which was a big bo benefit to, to Trevor. And then bringing uh, Zay Jones in as well, and Evan Ingram in on top of it, and ETN getting healthy again. It, the dynamic, the speed on the field was was uh, night and day between 2021 and 22. Yeah, not even close. You're right, exactly. But more versatility across the roster. All right, so like, what's the next step? What's, what's What are we looking at? I know you don't want to give us all your secrets, but for this year, what are you looking at for the Jaguars to kind of round out the roster and the team in general? Well, more, more players with versatility, right? Yeah. Another, you know, you only got 53 guys, right? Everybody's got the same number of guys. So how do you improve the numbers? Versatility. Right. You know, one-dimensional players tend to pigeonhole you a little bit. So looking for guys that are versatile, looking for guys that really fit our system, but more importantly, really fit the culture we're trying to build in Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the piggyback off of that, just like the, your two first-rounders last year. You know, I know they kind of fit your mold as far as length and size. You know, it was controversial, Trayvon Walker, Aiden Hutchinson. I mean, I don't think either one's wrong. But kind of how you came to those determinations and kind of what you, you know, how you evaluated their first year. Well, I think, again, you know, with Trayvon and, and, and Aiden, both very good football right, players. Right, we know that, right. Both very different. Yeah. You know, and what we, the system that we use and the system defensively that, that we employ on first and second down and third down, Trayvon was just a, a, better, a better fit, fit for right. us and, and what we're looking for. And obviously the physical, you know, stature of the player as well. Uh, but that doesn't take anything away from Aiden. He had a heck of a rookie year. And again, both good football players. But as we looked at it, Trayvon was just a better fit for us at the time. Right. And speaking of fits, I've gotten the impression from afar that you and Coach Peterson have a good fit, that it works. And, you know, it's important for the coach and the GM to be on the same page. I think turning it around after the rough start, the loss in Denver is a testament to the fact that things didn't go dysfunctional, things didn't crumble. But shed some light on your relationship with Coach Peterson and how it's, it's grown from last year at this time to where we are now. Well, I think like any relationship, it's trust, you know, and the longer you work with somebody, the, the easier it is to know where that trust fit level is. And, you know, I have a lot of trust in him, and I hope he has a lot of trust in me. You know, we continue to work at it. We're very collaborative in what we do. Uh, you know, we don't make any decisions off the spur of the, the moment. You know, we think through it, think about how we want a, this thing to look this year and as we go into the future. Uh, but... There's a lot of commonalities between us, you know, he, where he grew up and what he loves to do with his spare time and wh where I grew up and what I love to do in my spare time. He, he spent a big part of his lifetime in, in Green Bay, Wisconsin as a Packer. Uh, I grew up not too far from there. He loves to hunt and fish. I love to hunt and fish. He loves to golf. I I'm okay to golf. Right? I can't he be likes perfect. to golf against me because he kicks you my some butt. Money. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't. You gamble. don't do that. You're smart. Gamble. You're smart. What do you like to fish for? So. Walleyes, walleyes and musky. Okay. You know, musky any, have teeth too. Yeah. Musky, musky will bite you back. Yeah. 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 So, 
But no, it's 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 been a great relationship up to this point. I don't see anything changes. You know, there, there's a lot of respect, and that's what we try to get within the entire organization is that respect factor and that trust factor, and that's that's earned over time. How, how about over time? You know, the sport always evolving, right? For a guy like you, I'm interested in just like. All right, we just talked about that 49er team back in the 2010-11. Here we are 10 years later. How has the game evolved as far as your job's concerned or how you have to look at players? Is there anything that you know jumps out? I think the versatility thing's a big thing like you've talked about. Uh, but is there anything else that we don't see as you know media or fans? I think we're still trying to look at it the same way. Yeah. You know, I really am. You know, I, I, it's a big man's game in our opinion. And, you know, that's how we approach it. doesn't mean we're going to – you know, take every little guy, smaller guy off the board. Right. Uh, but trying to build a, a, a big physical football team that can win those late season games. Because, you know, you look at the AFC right now, you got you to go into some tough climates. Yeah, you do. Late in the year to win mm-hmm. football games. And that takes a tough-minded football team to do that. And that's what we're trying to build. Right. How do you balance trying to win while Trevor Lawrence is still on his rookie deal versus recognizing it's unpacked? At some point, he won't be. And the Chiefs just want it with Patrick Mahomes, not on his rookie deal. I think sometimes we put too much emphasis on going all in while you've got a quarterback early in his career. But but how do you balance that reality that you're not going to have Trevor Lawrence at the rookie wage scale rate maybe for only one more year? Yeah, you know, again, I think we're not in, in this for for one, one season. We're not trying to throw everything toward one season or trying to do anything special while he's on his rookie deal. We're trying to build the best football team that we can that's sustainable. And the Chiefs have proven you can do it. And that's the standard right now, and everybody's chasing that standard. And, and Brett and, and Coach Reed have done an outstanding job of putting that team together, letting some guys go that, you know, were tough decisions. Right. And tough decisions are a part of this business. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to look at it, you know, each year and try to build the best, most competitive football team we can. Uh, again, uh, there's only so many resources, right? So you gotta, you, you gotta, you can't re-sign them all. So you gotta make prudent decisions right. as you go through this. So well, last thing, I know you gotta go, and you'd rather do other things than talk to <laughs> us. But um, you know, uh, damn, I totally blanked out on what I was gonna say there. I had something. Let's that talk I was about Evan Ingram. Oh, oh, that's a good great, one. Great, great deal. Oh, one I know your contract, but now <laughs> you can get back. To what that. happens? What happens with Evan Ingram? In your estimation, well, again, I'm, we're hoping that we don't have to use the tag. Uh, you know, will we? We could. Um, do we want to? Not really. You know, I, I think with every deal, there's a win-win. You know, and Evan wants to be back. He's he stated that. Uh, I don't want to speak for him, but he's he stated that publicly. Juwan wants to be back. He stated that publicly, and we want them both back. Uh, just like we want Andrew back and and Dwan and and Arden. We realize, can we do it all? Probably not. We're going to do our best to do it all, and it's, it's going to take some time. And we've got a window here before free agency opens, and our goal as an organization is to, is to close as many of these as we can before we get into free agency. If we can't, we're just going to have to play the game yeah. and see where it goes. Right. I remember I'm a blonde from New Jersey who went to Texas, so it's the trifecta, okay? you got to just <laughs> stay with me every now and then. The, you talk about... Uh, the Chiefs. I wanted to piggyback off of that. Uh, you've been around football for a long time. Like what? What? Uh, we know the quarterbacks, man. But what impresses you about their football team when you you got the chance to see them twice this year? What's the well, secret sauce that you look at for them? They, first of all, they've got a lot of good football players. Yeah. You know, and they've got a culture built there that's very s- sustainable. Uh, coach Reed is an, an unbelievable head coach, and he's proven that over his entire career certainly a Hall of Famer as, as you move down the road, yeah. uh, well deserving of that. But, you know, I think just the balance that they have across the board, you know, they, they have physical fronts on both sides of the line right. of scrimmage, and I think that's where it starts. Yeah. You know, you got to be able to run the ball, they can run the ball. You got to be able to stop the run, they can stop the run. Uh, you know, so they're, they're a tough out. You know, and we had two good games against them. The second one a little tighter than the first one. Right. Uh, you know, we're, we're not far away. No, you're not. But at the same time, 
you know, that year's over. We're starting a new year, and, and uh, it's a lot different when you're the hunted rather than being the hunter. Yeah, that's for sure. It is amazing, and we talk about this all the time, where the Jaguars were in 2017, up 10 points in the fourth quarter of the AFC Championship and how quickly it went the wrong way, but it's going back the right way even faster than it, than it went down. And it just feels like you guys are riding that wave of momentum, and, and you're right. All you can do at this point is try to build on it. Well, I think, you know, I, the, the great thing about how the season ended with the two games at home, um, you know, prior to the, the Chiefs game, but the, the late season game Tennessee, to win the AFC South right. in Tennessee and then the, the playoff game against the, the Chargers, I think the Duval County, the community, you know, we got a real sense for what how electric that community can be and how much they'll rally around this football team and this organization. All it takes is us to put a winner out there. And, uh, you know, that's our goal yeah. is, to, is to have build off of that, that environment, that electricity that we had late in the year. And I hope the fans come out from week one and push us through the season rather than waiting till week 17 and 18. Yeah, right. Well, based on how it ended last year, I think they'll be there from the get-go this year. He's Trent Bauke, Duval. GM of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.